What's up, Odooers? Today, let's turn our attention to managing the Axivox account, one of Odoo's VoIP service providers. Setting up your employees in Axivox enables them to make and receive calls using VoIP, aka Voice Over Internet Protocol. Each user in Odoo will need their own account in a VoIP service provider as well. This is so phone numbers, extensions, and voicemails can all be sent to each user. Here at Stealthy Wood, our employees use Odoo VoIP to connect with each other as well as customers, vendors, and partners. And just our luck, we'll be setting up a new Axvox account for our newest hire, Roman. The service provider doesn't have to be Axvox, but there are still some requirements your provider must meet, which are outlined in Odoo's VoIP documentation, which of course I've linked down below. Also, this demo will primarily be in Axvox, so your screen might look different if you use another provider. With that all said, let's dive into Axivox. Alrighty folks, so here we are on the homepage of Axivox and first we need to figure out what phone number to claim. So we're gonna click into this incoming phone numbers in our left of menu section here. And this will show us what numbers have yet to be claimed. Incoming numbers are the phone numbers Stealthywood pays for so employees can use them as dialing destinations. Axivox sends those calls to a specified extension configured as the destination. And it looks like this phone number here ending in 6544 has no destination configured quite yet, which means this is unassigned because no destination is set. So this is the incoming number we're going to use for Roman. So let's go ahead and make his user account now. To create his account, we're going to click on users here on the left menu. And then we're going to click add user. First, we're going to enter an extension number. We're going to type in 1010. And then for the name, we're going to name it, you guessed it, Roman. And for the email address, we're just going to put Roman at stealthywood.test, which is important because this is how Roman will get voicemails and phone notifications. For the GSM number, this is basically an alternative number that this user can be reached at. We don't have one for Roman at the moment, so we're gonna skip this for now. Next, we have our voicemail, and we're gonna be sure to check this and turn this into yes. So this is so we can manage our voicemails, which I'll link a video to down below so we can learn more. And now in our outgoing number, we're going to go ahead and click the 6544 number that we saw earlier. If we leave it on default, Roman would be reached by that 1010 extension when someone calls that default number in our Axbox account setting. This means that Roman would only have the phone extension instead of our dedicated line. Almost at the end of the page, we have our directory section and we're just gonna select default for this category. And by checking the box under directory, this allows Roman to take multiple calls simultaneously, but there are better ways to manage multiple calls by forwarding, so we're gonna leave this unchecked. Also, under the user hot desk, if Stealthy Wood used physical VoIP phones on desks and wanted employees to log in from any phone or desk in the office, we would select this checkbox here. But we're not, so we can leave that blank for now. So we're just gonna click save here. And after we click save, it takes us back to our users page. So we're going to click back into Roman's profile. Now let's tackle forwarding. So we're going to click into that forwarding tab. And we'll begin with this forwarding on no answer, which manages what happens when calls aren't picked up. So we can go ahead and click add a destination. And we're going to type in Steven. And then select Steven, of course. Then we're going to set Steven's ring time from 0 to 20 seconds. And I can add as many people as I'd like. And I can also forward Steven's call to somebody else if in the event that he doesn't pick up. So we're going to click Add Destination again. And this time we're going to select Laura. And we're going to adjust her dial time to 20 seconds and 40 seconds. Now, if Steven doesn't pick up, the call gets sent to Laura for the next 20 seconds. And finally, we can check the box next to send to voicemail as last resort. 
This means that if neither Steven nor Laura picks up, the caller is sent a voicemail to leave a message. For forwarding on busy, we could use the same logic. We could click this add a destination button to forward callers when I'm already on a call. The only difference is that the call will be redirected if Roman's already on another call. For the sake of time though, let's continue to the next tab by clicking this follow me tab. Follow me enables the VoIP software to call a device other than the database VoIP's widget. Since Roman is a salesperson who needs constant phone access, this is helpful when he's on business trips. So we're gonna tick the box for follow me and the table, we're just gonna click add a destination and enter another phone number, which is gonna be his personal phone number, which is 555-555-5555. And we're gonna set this ring duration to 45 seconds. And if we ever wanna turn off this option, like when Roman takes his yearly trip to the Bahamas, we can easily disable it by deselecting this follow me checkbox. The number is also stored, so it can be easily turned on after that trip. Keep in mind that turning this feature on will turn off those forwarding messages that we just did. You can either redirect calls to another agent in Axvox or another device, but not both at the same time. Next, let's configure the speed dialing options by clicking this keys tab here. And first, let's set the number of keys that Roman will have by clicking into this number of keys. Right now it's at 20, which is an awful lot, so we're gonna change this to two. So in the drop-down field for key one, we're going to select quick call. And in the label field, we're just gonna label this Odoo Consultant. And in the number field, we'll enter the phone number for our Odoo Consultant, which is going to be 111111111. Nice. And for key two, let's choose line. And we're gonna label this call Steven. And then in this drop down here, all we have to do is select Steven. Steven's a rock star if you couldn't tell. So now let's review the SIP identifiers by clicking into this tab. And here are the credentials like the username and password that we're gonna use to connect Roman's Axebox account to Odoo so we can use the widget. If you wanna follow along with that, then make sure to check out our Odoo VoIP setup video next, which I've linked down below. These are known as SIP identifiers. SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol, and it's the specific tech that lets us make calls and take calls through the internet connection. If you have any other tools that you want Roman to use for VoIP, these are the credentials you'll need to connect Axivox to that platform. Let's get on with the setup by tackling the permissions next here on the right tab. And we're nearly at the end, folks. So here are all the permissions that we can give Roman. Users typically won't need these permissions as they're mainly for administrators. So we'll skip them for now, but for an IT administrator, consider granting most or all of these permissions. These permissions don't affect VoIP usage, so Roman can make calls through the Odoo database without an issue. Remember to click save at the bottom though before moving on, or you're gonna have to repeat all these steps. So once the new user is informed and is saved, you'll be taken to the users page once again, now let's assign Roman's profile to that 6544 number from earlier. So we're gonna go to the incoming numbers section. And here we're just gonna select our 6544 number. And we're gonna set the destination to extension. And we'll select Roman in the extension type field. And of course we need to click save after we've configured all of this. And finally, to apply everything that we've worked on, we'll click this Apply Changes button at the top right corner of the screen. Just saving the changes doesn't apply them to our account, so let's make sure to click that to do so and make sure Roman has no issues. And we're all done here in Axibox. We've still got some steps to take care of in Odoo to make sure that Roman can actually make a call from our database, so check out our other setup video to see what that would look like. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.